Hi guys! Um, today I wanted to make a video on Shakespeare. Um, I study English literature A level um, in which you do a section on Shakespeare and I've been talking to a lot of people recently about Shakespeare um, like my cousin does it for GCSE and you also do Shakespeare and I think it can be a really big and kind of worrying thing to approach Shakespeare if you haven't done it before you've not a lot of real knowledge of it so I want to make a video on how to read Shakespeare and you know some tips and tricks to make it a little bit easier so my first tip is going to be don't worry about it. like don't panic over it because it can seem when you read it to be like a lot of words that you don't even really know or words that don't even seem like actual words and that will just come with time and with um, you learning more about it so don't freak out right away with that you know, I would say as a kind of main tip overall is just to read different Shakespeare's. If you, if you study maybe Othello, read some other books as well, just to get used to it. Because there's a lot of language that was very common in those times that we don't use now. Uh, the famous one being Wherefore Art Thou Romeo from Ro Romeo and Juliet, which everyone's like, well, she's asking where he is, but she's not. She's asking why is he Romeo, which doesn't seem like it would make sense. But the wherefore is used as an expression in a lot of other ones of his plays. So now I can look at that and go, okay, she's asking, or whoever's asking is asking, why is this? You know, stuff like that, we're learning what different words mean by just expanding your Shakespeare reading is really, really helpful. As it allows you, as you're reading it, to understand what's going on, um, rather than kind of getting lost in certain parts because the language doesn't really make sense to you. The next point, one of the points a lot of people uh, bring up is that if you are worried about it or worried about approaching it or understanding it, is to watch um, maybe a play first or to watch any sort of um, adaptation of the book as a play because when you watch the play you understand um, a lot more about it the, you know you get the whole setting and all the characters and there's a lot of times in the play you can get a better understanding because you know characters say things in certain ways that maybe you wouldn't have picked up on in just reading it but having someone shout something or whisper something you know, it gives you that more in-depth knowledge of what's happening and that can help you understand it more so that when you come to read it yourself, you have a kind of knowledge, you know what happens throughout the narrative, rather than approaching it with no prior experience as to what was going to be happening, which would mean you could get lost. And then because it's so, uh, the language can be so difficult um, and a lot of things happen very fast, is that um, you can get lost quite easily and then um, it can get quite confusing and that's what um, I think puts a lot of people off. My next point that is kind of similar to watching a play is to listen to an audiobook. Um, these are also very helpful um, because it again gives you language that you know if someone's reading it to you um, so that you can understand it more and also it can help you keep up with if some of them that are all read by the same person, some of them use different um, people that do different voices, stuff like that can be really helpful as well if you don't want to watch it or because it can be very hard to find places to watch Shakespeare plays. So normally if you go onto Spotify, um, you can find audiobooks or like podcasts people have done where they just it's just the complete play. Another one is just to not be intimidated by the plays because even though they seem quite long, because they're plays, they're actually maybe be, I think the longest is maybe four hours um, of like a read time. So it may seem very long, but also if you get certain additions, um, some of them can be shorter. So maybe if you're going to purchase one, look into how it is laid out because some people prefer them in a different way than others. Some of the um, Oxford World Classics are half pages. Some of them are only, you know, the only the play is on one side. It's all different. Sometimes um, all of the index and, and kind of explanations is on the back. So look into that. I would say um, these editions, which are the Oxford World Classic editions, are the easiest because half of the page is the play and half the page down here is the explanation, which can really make it easier. Or there are some of the like school editions that are also very good for this because it means while you're reading, you can look up the what's on line seven and it'll give you an explanation right there than having to look and surf through um, different information at the back to try and find it, what that is. So yeah, pick the edition that works best for you. I'd also say pick the genre that works for you. A lot of Shakespeare's known for his tragedies, but he has comedies, he has... Um, historical plays you know so pick one that works best one that you're most interested in because you don't want to lose interest in it while you're trying to read it because it's already quite difficult another tip that I would say is kind of a more fun one is to kind of reenact the scenes um, because a lot of the time there's a lot of movement that goes on during plays not a lot of people stand still there's a lot of people coming in and coming out if you can reenact how you think that character will be acting this helps your understanding and also makes it a bit more fun because also Shakespeare it's put into acts and those acts are put into scenes you know it's not very long so maybe go up and reenact an act as a one man play. You know, it's um, there's a lot of fun you can have with it while reading that sometimes with normal books you don't get because it's very much everything's laid out for you. But you get the creativity of kind of 
becoming these characters because you have everything about them right in front of you, demonstrated through their reactions and through maybe their asides or um, any soliloquies and stuff that they may have. And coming off that point is read your books act by act or scene by scene, you know, just take your time with it. There's no need to rush it. And although they may look long, they're not actually as long as you may think. So reading, some acts are very short, um, some scenes are very short, it, you know, just take your time with it, really have fun with it. And maybe just do a few scenes at a time, one scene at a time. And, um, you know, if there's anything you don't understand, maybe try and read over it and really... A lot of the books also have a synopsis at the start. Uh, this is more for, like, the, the school's editions, but I find they can be very helpful because it kind of tells you what's happening. So even when you're revising it or whatever, it's really easy to look over and go, okay, this is what happens in Act 4, Scene 3, you know, um, and that can be really helpful as well because before you read it, it gives you a synopsis and you can kind of, okay, figure out, maybe if you don't 100% understand the language, you can understand what's happening because you already know from it written in normal, simple terms, what's going to happen. So yeah, as a final little point, I wanted to give you um, some of my favourite ones that you can start with. I have three here. So the first one we have is one that I would recommend, um, and that's going to be Macbeth. Um, Macbeth, it's a nice short play. It is one of his, um, it is one of his tragedies. Um, quite a famous play, one of his more famous plays, but a really good one. I studied this at GCSE. And it has a lot of contextual stuff to it, which I think is very interesting. I've talked about this book before. Um, I think it's quite easy to understand compared to some of his other books, um, some of his other plays. So, yeah, we have Macbeth. Um, we have another tragedy, which is King Lear, which is probably one of my favourite Shakespeare's. Again, kind of similar to Macbeth. Um, both kind of focusing on pride and ambition. Um, another one of his tragedies, probably one of his most famous plays, aside from possibly Hamlet, um, which is another one of his tragedies. But I think these are these are both very good books. A lot of famous quotes come from these books, and I think they're short enough. They keep your interest, and um, yeah, there's a lot to learn from these books, and um, a lot of understanding that can be taken away from Shakespeare through reading these books. And the third one we have is going to be Romeo and Juliet. This is a longer play. Also, this edition makes it look really long because it's only really half pages, and also a lot of this is introduction. So these books also have really good context in them and help you understand for studying them. But Romeo and Juliet, probably um, another very, very famous book, a lot of adaptations of this, and also a very good one to start with because it's all very, it's all very well known, like a lot of people know the plot of Romeo and Juliet, or the idea of Romeo and Juliet without even having ever been near Shakespeare. So um, another very good one to start with. 